A very warm welcome to all our listeners around the world. You're welcome to the Tony Tukumbo Fernandez Show, the show that promotes the true life stories of Africans and Caribbeans around the world. Feel free to take a few seconds to subscribe to our channel. But if there's a product or initiative that you want to promote, feel free to give us a call on 0788 280 That's 0788 280 And we'll be glad to help out. It's all about promoting the true life stories of Africans and Caribbeans doing great work around the world, as well as celebrating their success stories and their journey. And today we're all the way in Lagos, speaking to a young prominent gentleman who was a qualified architect, but he's also a Pan-Africanist published writer. Uh, Claude Okpala, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How are you today? Fine, thank you. I'm pleased to be here. Yeah. Very great to be here. How are you doing? I'm doing very well, yeah. And uh, I'm sure everything is okay with you in Lagos. Yeah. You're, you're looking very yes. well. Um, but for the benefit of all our listeners around the world, can you tell us a bit about yourself, your background, and what inspires you as a person? Okay, mm. that's a long one. Okay, now I'll keep it brief. Um, my name is, I'm Claude Opara, like you said. I'm a Nigerian from the eastern side of the country. I, was, uh, I grew up mostly in the north, although I was born outside the country, but I grew up mostly in the north, in Katuna specifically. Okay. Uh, practically most of my life, both in the north, and I, I moved to Lagos in uh, about 20 years ago. So I've also been in Lagos, so you can say I'm both east, west, and north, all, all around, more or less. Fantastic. You know. um, sorry? That's fantastic. Yes, uh, it's it's you have to get around. <laughs> so I speak a bit of a bit of um, of course I speak Igbo, and uh, of course now I'm also working on my Yoruba. So I find all aspects of Nigeria quite interesting, as well as Africa. I I like to draw, or I still like to draw. So I have an interest in science, both as well as arts. So architecture basically calls to me. So. I practice, I studied architecture and I've been practicing for like um, 20 years now. And, um, but besides that, the other interests I have besides archaeology and, uh, and um, art, also like the, anything, the creative aspect. So to cut a long story short, I think I had this, I saw this thing years ago while I was back in school. Uh, we all grew up on things like, um, European mythologies, European legends. We all grew up reading Robin Hood. I grew up reading Asterix, Tintin. Then we have Peter Pan, Paul Bunyan, all these popular legends, Hercules and all that. But I said, wait, we don't seem to have much for the kids in terms of Africa, in terms of Nigeria. What you see them walking around with um, Aladdin, um, Walt Disney, Walt Disney stuff, and they know a lot more about European culture, European history. But if you ask the kid growing up, because one thing in Nigeria now, it's I think it's just recently government started trying to encourage uh, uh, history in, 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 in Nigeria. Most schools in Nigeria have zero or no knowledge of history. And if you ask a kid in Nigeria what about the knock culture, or about the Benin Empire, they don't know anything about it, about Kinami now, Sokoto, of Zaria, or of um, uh, Oramio. They, they don't know much about that. They, but if you ask them about King Arthur, King Alfred, um, Maria, Antoinette, they know the whole thing. They can tell you from top to bottom. So there was something wrong. And I felt there was a need to help kids get interested in our culture, get interested in our Nigerian culture. And um, so, sorry, I think there's a bit of noise here. Okay, someone's... Someone's mowing the lawn, so okay. <laughs> excuse me. Uh, so um, I looked at that and I asked myself, how do I get kids interested in this? We need to help them get that passion about knowing about their culture, because if you don't respect and recognize your culture, you can't go out and present it. There's a gap 
you can't someone can't meet you up in europe or in uk and ask you what's what about nigeria and what do you know about our culture you probably just tell them to google because you, you don't represent it you don't even know much about it so the first thing i thought about was how do i get ch children interested in this and that's how comics came about because illustration talking about something so abstract to them the best way for it to resonate to the kids is by putting it in graphically when they see it in a way as easy to appreciate as possible they'll be able to to relate to it but if you're telling them in a book where they have to imagine especially a certain age maybe you're looking from six years old to probably like 13 14 you're trying to get them to conceptualize these things so i came up with an idea of coming up with Nigerian stories start as a startup, Nigerian legends, where I can play with, uh, I, legends that I can play with, so as the kids can actually look at it from a historical side, but also a fun side. And it was easy to work with legends as against actual historical figures because they, those are actually sensitive. I can take, for example, work on an Awolowo storyline and add humor to it and add things to it without it becoming a very sensitive topic. So I had to take up legends that are partly true, but partly um, false. So you can have that laxity or that leverage to add your own color to it. So that's how I came up with comics. Basically. Beautiful. So now before we delve into your comics and the historical themes that run through these comics and how relevant they are to African history today, you did say, I mean, you've, you've, um, you're from East Nigeria you've grown up in northern Nigeria and now you're living in western Nigeria but you've also said you were born outside Nigeria as well now where 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 in Africa were you born okay, and how, was, how did that play a big insight in you having a broader perspective on the African narrative okay I was born in uh what is called the Democratic Republic of Congo now, then was Zaire. Yeah. Uh, I didn't stay that long there. I left when I was three, so the impact wasn't that much, but at least in the Francophone side, the French side, I could, I got um, some, some, some background to it. So when I came to, Ni when I, we moved to Nigeria, we came with more of an innocent kind of outlook to, as a kid as well, Keeping an innocent outlook to the country, no biases. You know, there are a lot, there are a lot of biases we see in, in cultural biases, and we see in the country and outside the country. But when you come in as a kid, without that uh, influence, even from your parents, you look at things in a more, um, so to say, balanced outlook. Right. So when I moved to Kaduna, I didn't see myself as different from those growing up there. We all grew up together. We learned speak together we spoke la Hausa together we spoke english together so everything was more or less like family so that's how it was fantastic and we i know for the benefit of all our listeners around the world today uh you did you've published a book but you also published a work on african comics can you just tell us briefly tell our listeners about this comic book and the historical representations in this book and how important is it in our world today? Okay, um, maybe I should use this as motivation. Well, this is it from my library. That's a uh, bias. Um, I found the legend of Bayajida quite curious because, first of all, Bayajida is not is a foreigner coming to. Um, the northern part of the country. There was no country then, but Dara particularly. And the story was intriguing because it's, it's, it carries a lot of lessons for the young generation in terms of a rash, arrogant young man, full of youth and youthful exuberance, now going in in search of something to make his, his father proud, to show him that he's responsible trying to do things that would make him feel more of a man. Yeah. And he goes there in search of it, conquering places, but he still did not feel, get that fulfillment in terms of what he sought out to get, all the lands he's conquered, until he now came to a place where there was uh, 
a snake threatening the whole village and nobody could get water until, until I mean, till Friday. So they had to stock up for the whole week until the next Friday. And he felt that this wasn't right. And he came in, his horse was thirsty, he was thirsty and it was thirsty and nobody could sacrifice their water. And then he also met a lady that showed him something else beyond himself. So there was, there was a bit of attraction to the lady. There's a bit of youthful attraction to the lady, but something beyond himself. So he went out to kill this snake for Dara, for the sake of Dara, and also for the sake of, for the hand of the princess, which was promised to whoever kills the snake. So he did something sacrificial, which was out of his character, but he learned it. And when he did achieve his goal, and the lady promised, sorry, the, the promise was whoever killed the snake would get half of her kingdom. So the lady now offered half of her kingdom to him, but he was not interested in riches and power and land. He was interested in her hand in marriage because she had fallen in love with her. So there was something more than just material value, material importance that this story conveys. He sacrificed, he took the risk to fight the snake for his horse that was thirsty, for the people there that needed water, and for a lady that he had found some attraction to. So he eventually married the lady, but the summary for the kids was being brave, learning to do things that were beyond you and were more for the society at large. So it was an interesting story, which I now twisted, added a bit of humor so that the kids could relate to it without it sounding so, um, educational, so um, patronizing in a, word, in a way, trying to teach you basically, because sometimes when kids see some certain things being so clear, black and white, as if it's an educational book, they run away. So you need to blend it with a bit of enlightenment, a little bit of fun, so that it's, it's, the, the message sinks in without sounding too direct. So that was the vibe that I was about, yeah. Beautiful. Now, for the benefit of all our listeners today, who would like to feed from the moral stories of these uh, of this book comic book you published or even your work itself or for the benefit of our listeners who have children as, as well who would also want to feed from all these african morals and tales that inspire us and they want to get in touch with you um with regards to your work the comic book and your current initiatives how do they get in contact with you Oh, okay. Um, yes, I think one of the fastest ways to get in touch with me would be through my the Baya Jida Instagram page. It's at Baya Legend, Baya B A Y A Legend. That's at Baya Legend. That's the Instagram. You can DM me for if you're within the country for copies. We could engage that. I could could be distributed. But it's also available on Amazon and um, uh, Amazon basically for outside the country, it's Amazon Kindle and also on the normal hard copy. If you're the person, if you like hard copy comics, like most, most of us old timers were interested in, you can get it on Amazon. Um, I have a few other outlets, bookshops basically within the country. But also the good thing is um, I I'm, uh, I'm also working with UBEC. UBEC, that's Universal Basic Education um, uh, for a commission in Nigeria to have these books in all primary and JSS uh, schools. Currently it's ongoing with uh, Biojida is in almost um, maybe like 60% of um, public schools in Nigeria now, both in the primary and the sec uh, JSS, because that's the criteria we put in, uh, late primary uh, and JSS books. So it's available there, but for your own personal copy, you can get it in uh, bookshops in Lagos, you can DM me, you can also get it on Amazon. Now we come from a continent which is rich in history, rich in culture and rich in stories. We have um, the richness of the uh, Mali empire, the Songhai empire, the Ghana empire, the richest man that ever existed on the face of the earth, Man Sakan Kamusa. We have all this history, we have all these stories. Um, does it not surprise you sometimes that with all this history and context, this should be enough to feed the inspiration for bestseller films, bestseller comics, and bestseller books. 
And why is there not really taking advantage of that? That's a very good question. I think nobody's going to tell our stories for us. Um, they would, uh, the West will most likely, they're interested in our stories, but they want us to tell them the stories because if they tell it for us, they'd say transfer, translate it in their own context. And that's the context the whole world will know it for. Um, a lot of these characters were inspired by African uh, legends. Take, for example, Black Panther that most people were enthralled with. The, uh, Dora Milaji, the all-female uh, uh, warriors there, were inspired by the Amazons of Bene. There was a, there was a, there was a, uh, some female warriors, very popular female warriors in uh, Bene back back in those days uh, of of the Homi Bene Republic. So we have those stories, like Mansa Musa that you mentioned. I look at it and I have and I see that there is a lack, there's, there's a gap, there's something that we can work on, but no, nobody's working on it. We've seen Vikings, we've seen Spartacus, we've seen um, Julius Caesar, we've seen Rome. All these are historical, very interesting series talking about historic European history and everybody knows about it. And I ask myself, how come nobody has actually tried working on Mansa Musa, for example, or, or, um, or Ramion? Currently I'm working on another comic, which is, um, um, so more because uh, what I'm trying to do is work on all sections of the country. So I'm moving to the West now. So it's based on a Western legend. That's what I'm working on right now, popular Western legend. So if these legends, they also help boost our tourism. So if these legends come out, either in film, either in a novel, in a comic, and it's sold to the West the way it's supposed to be from our own perspective, not from their perspective, it will both it will enlighten us and also engage them because it's some it's something new. Every time they they're used to their own material, they're used to what they have. They want to see something from Africa, but we're not doing it. We're more interested in other ways of making money. So, like you said, it's something I want to delve into, and and I would advise and encourage others to do the same because there's a lot of rich history all across Africa. Shaka Zulu, um, um, uh, what's his name again? Um, Queen Amina. Queen Amina inspired um, Shira, those old comics of the cartoons of back, back then, but they were inspired by Queen Amina. These are characters we have, but we do not know what to do with it, how to get the story out there. So that's the challenge now. That's what I'm taking up. Okay. You've heard it from Claude Opara all the way in Lagos, Nigeria, published by an Africanist writer in comics and also uh, architect doing great work. Uh, thanks for being with us today. On a very final note, uh, what final message do you have for all our African and Caribbean listeners listening around the world today? Be proud of your culture. Uh, be very proud of the culture. It's um, when we're living in a world that if you're not proud of who you are, you would not be who you are. In other words, if you don't stand for anything, you will fall for anything. So if you don't know where you're coming from, you can't have that pride because you're just floating. So I, I encourage most people to try and history sometimes is boring. You don't need to go into it for some people. For some of us, it's very intriguing. But for if, if you're not into the depth of history, just try and know a little bit about where you're from, where your people came from. So you give you a, a sense of pride and a sense of uh, belonging to something. So when you go out, you know you're, you're not just representing yourself, but you're representing a culture. It's a pleasure to have you on today. Keep up the amazing work you're doing at the moment. And I'm sure I'll catch you soon in Lagos. And God bless you. Thanks. Bless you too. Thank you.